this picture from NASA says, world has lost one of its glaciers called OK in Iceland. Uh, another picture that compares the Seoul Spring Flower Festival happened in 2010 and 21 says, spring flowers are blooming ahead of schedule these days. Weather is pretty much unpredictable these days. Summer is very hot, winter is extremely cold, beautiful autumn is shrinking, and spring flowers are blooming ahead of schedule. Many experts say this climate change is because of emission of greenhouse gases due to global warming. As per experts' advice, several economies across the globe, including Korea, join hands to fight against this climate shift. When you search in web, the climate action tracker, you will find country-wise data on their systematic plan to reduce emissions. I am a member in Institute of Mechanical Engineers, London. I have participated in several webinars on upcoming technologies to reduce emissions. I always thought to myself, personally, as normal citizens, can we do something for this cause? 25% of emissions are from food wastage, deforestation, and other general wastes. If we do a proper waste management, and if we use our resources daily basis efficiently, we can be the reason to reduce some amount of emissions. Korea is having high standards of waste segregation and waste management. It ranks third in waste recycling, next to Germany and Austria. Around 53.7% of wastes are recycled in Korea, but still more than 40% are entering as landfills. And globally, around 11 billion tons of waste are entering as landfills or incineration, affecting our environment. If we all can develop a healthier waste management habit, we can support our environment by reducing some amount of emissions. It's not so difficult. It's pretty simple if we build healthier waste management habits into our daily routines. To do that, I have four simple suggestions. Suggestion one. Reducing food wastage. As you can see in this picture, in most of the apartments in Korea, we have radio frequency identification system to collect the food wastage. It charges the resident as per the amount of food wastage collected. It has brought some good results in Korea. In Seoul City alone, 47,000 tons of food wastage reduced in six years' time. But still, Korea is on the highest side for food wastage. The main reason being a lot of side dish used in Korean style dining. These yummy side dishes called panchans most of the time left unfinished. My family came to Korea 13 years back. During initial years, we also wasted a lot of side dishes in our home. But few years back, we developed some good habits, like whenever we visit restaurants, before we start dining, we request the waiter to remove the side dish which we don't like. And whenever we pick up our food, we always check the side dish boxes carefully and return them back whichever we don't want. I humbly request everyone of you here to think about this seriously and try to reduce the side dish wastage, which is the main cause for food wastage in Korea. Normally, we follow buffet style in lunch in schools and offices. Can you guys think for a while in today's lunch how much food you wasted? If you're in buffet, Please try to achieve like this. This picture is my lunch plate taken in my office cafeteria. It is taken to define zero wastage is very much possible if you practice sincerely. I did this in three months' time, setting my own targets daily basis, kept monitoring them seriously in a disciplined manner. When you're in buffet, you have very good control on the amount of food you take. So whenever I take food on my plate, the thought which drives me is 1.3 billion tons of food wastage happening in annually that could feed 3 billion people. One third of the food produced is wasted, emitting 6 to 8 percentage of greenhouse gas emissions. If you are reducing your food waste, you are supporting our environment simply sitting at your home. Suggestion two, reducing paper usage. The first and foremost area to reduce paper usage is washrooms. This notice you might have seen in Korean restrooms these days. It says one tissue is very much enough to dry your hands. I saw the same notice in TCIS too, very much appreciated. 
1980 kid from India. So still I use uh, habitually a handkerchief to dry my hands. But I'm not saying everyone to use a handkerchief, but let's not use tissues like drawing water from a well. Technology also helping us these days to reduce paper usage, like a lot of hand dryers coming up in Korea in most of the places. When you visit banks or big hospitals, you can fill up the application forms using digital pads and sticks. Please note, 15 billion trees are cut every year, mainly for paper production. So in schools and offices, let's think twice before we print. It's recommended to go for a back-to-back -back unless there is specific reason for a single-page print. As trees and soil stores carbon, deforestation is a serious concern for climate change. Saving few papers every day from every individual could save our planet somehow from global warming. Suggestion three, reducing plastic usage and scrapping them properly. Let's follow our government recommendations to go for reusable bags, avoiding plastic straws, and going for reusable mugs for all of our drinks. Let's follow proper protocol in scrapping plastics clean. If you feel stuff in it, please rinse it with water and throw it clean so that it can be recycled. Just throwing plastic in recycle bin will not ensure it's recycling. For example, if a plastic bottle with leftover olive oil reaches the recycling company, and if the worker misses to segregate that, it will burst in shredding during recycling, nullifying the chances of nearby plastics to rebound. 300 million tons of plastics produced annually. Only 9% is recycled. Every minute, a truckload of plastics entering the ocean. If this continues, there could be more plastics in the sea than fishes by 2050. Reducing plastics and scrapping them properly will definitely support our environment by reducing emissions from plastics. Suggestion four, maximize the lifetime of household appliances like fans, humidifiers, towels, ovens, etc. When you scrap these equipments, some of the parts made of multiple materials could not be recycled, just entering as landfills. Then how to maximize the lifetime of these equipments? Simply two tips, which I learned from my dad when I was young. Tip one, ensure you have service center locally. Tip two, operate and maintain them properly as per manual instructions. Let's take an example of a simple table fan. If you lubricate and clean it properly at frequent intervals, its lifetime is getting increased. The major problem could happen in the motor. Uh, if you have a service center, you can repair that too. So here, I'd like to share one of my experience, personal experience in my life, uh, uh, happened in my life. We had a vacuum cleaner in our home. Two years back, its tube got damaged. So when I went to the service center to repair that, I was shocked by their response. They told me to completely buy a brand new vacuum cleaner, and they cannot give me the spare tube because of non-availability of spare tube. I was very much disappointed. Do I need to scrap my complete vacuum cleaner for a small damage in the tube? In that situation, I decided myself to repair the tube damage by using a proper glue and cellophane tape. As you can see in this picture, still we are using this after two years of that incident. It may not look good aesthetically. Also, buying a vacuum cleaner is not so expensive. But if we would have scrapped this, some of the parts made of multiple materials would have entered as landfills from my home. As users, you are the experts for your household stuffs. Use them properly. Maintain them frequently. Repair or modify them suitably. Go for maximizing its lifetime. Scrap the time it's going to get delayed. So to conclude, if we all follow my four suggestions, reducing food wastage, reducing paper usage, reducing plastic usage, maximize the lifetime of household appliances, I'm sure we can be the reason to reduce some amount of emissions. 
I humbly request every one of you here to take back this message, share with your families and friends. Let's all try to develop a healthier waste management habit into our routines so that we can do our part to support our environment. The efforts we are going to take is not so difficult, but the outcome is great and unseen. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, let's develop a healthier waste management habit and make our mother earth clean and livable for future generations to come. I'd like to end my talk with a quote from former US President Barack Obama. We are the first generation who can feel the effect of climate change and the last generation who can do something about it. Thank you.